We had uh, the Cody Rhodes deal. He comes out. No Vince McMahon. He just waits for his opponent and crowd starts to chant for Cody. And then they do the big deal where the lights go out and it's dark in the arena. And then the music hits. And it is Cody Rhodes, AW Music. He's introduced as the American Nightmare. It's a total AW gimmick. He uh, comes out. The place just went absolutely crazy when they hit this guy's music. Just going crazy, chanting his name. Got in the ring. Very early on, he did the uh, cartwheel. He did the stardust pose. They popped big for that. And then they just had an excellent, like, I don't know how to describe it. I described it as like a a Triple H style match. It's the long WrestleMania style, big moves, big near falls, kick out of finishes style match. 20 minutes. And uh, Cody eventually won with a series of crossroads. Three three crossroads. Yep. Cody had kicked out, or uh, Seth had kicked out of one earlier, and then he hit uh, two more, a series of bionic elbows, another crossroads got the pin, and the place went crazy for him, and he's going to be on Raw, and he's going to explain everything, he says. Well, he can't answer the real question. He'll say what he's here for, is what he'll say. He's he's here for the, he's here for the championship, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it was weird. I mean, he he's done a few interviews, and uh, one of his interviews was, you know, I didn't want to uh, just win the uh, TNT title fifty times. Like, I wanted the big one. I was well, like, that was well, his what choice. Did you, what did you say? You're never going to fight for the world title for then, buddy? Yeah, that's that's it's. This is all. This is all. Uh, what would I call it? You know, like, like, uh, wrestle speak. Well, I mean, sure. Like, I mean, if he really it's like wanted the whole, to fight the whole, for the, the he didn't leave because he couldn't challenge for the AW title. No, 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 no. And that was his own doing. And then he didn't want to do it. I, I mean, it's like there's, there's. I'm sure that there's reasons that that are there that nobody wants to talk about because, um, you know, that will eventually come out someday. But um, and I don't know what they are. I have you know, I have a million hints of what they are. But um, you know. It was it was in his mind time to leave and uh, the you know whatever you know what I mean it's like the week the the week after his contract was up they were still in pretty hot negotiations and thought they were going to keep him and then it fell through and Vince made the offer and uh, you know I mean from his standpoint I get why he went uh, because. He was in a bad spot. I mean, for months in AEW, he was in a bad spot because he, you know, he wanted to be a babyface and he wanted to do a certain role. And the funny part of the role, here's another thing, too. You know what I mean? There's people who know this and I, I've talked about it before. But even even after January 1st, you know, he was still working on community stuff for stuff in like June, you know what I mean? It wasn't like he was like, he wasn't under contract anymore. You know what I mean? And it wasn't like, okay, I'm not doing this job. I'm going to just come back and, you know, uh, put Sammy Guevara over and leave type of thing. It's like he was still working at that until the end. He was, you know, talking about things and everything. And he took that, that, you know, pretty seriously, you know, more than most. Um, so, and then, you know, even with that, even with that role, vice president and everything like that, I mean, whether it was Vince talked him into it, um, Vince put the money there, you know, said, we're going to use you the right way. We're not going to, you know, obviously Vince said, we're not going to change you because we don't fix what's broken, which is very unlike Vince, who wants to put his stamp on everything. And basically, Cody did come in with the AEW ring entrance. Uh, he came in with the AEW music. Um, he came in with his AEW outfit without, you know, changing something, changing his look. It was the same exact thing. And, you know, the place was going to go crazy because it's a new guy. And like, I know, like when I mentioned how crazy everybody went and, and, and everyone goes, just wait. And it's like, that's right. And we got to make that very clear. Of course, this is going to happen in four months, in whatever, um, you know, who knows? Who knows what the crowd will do, okay? Um, but I don't think they're going to boo him like they did in AEW. Whatever it is, I don't think... I mean, like, 
if he wants to turn heel, will they boo him? You know, that's a completely different animal. But I don't think that he's going to go out there doing babyface promos and people are going to start booing him. But maybe we'll see in two weeks and that happens. But I don't think that's going to happen. But, uh, you know, he was in a weird position in AEW because he was doing every trick in the book and the people were booing him. And it was a, you know, it was a similar to a Cena thing. Um, but he wasn't going to be able to change that no matter what he did. I mean, they threw him out there with Dan Lambert, the easiest heat magnet in that company that nobody likes, right? And, you know, it's just, you know, and, you know, I think, you know, I mean, Brandy didn't help. The reality show didn't help. It is what it is. It's it's happened, and it was the right move for him to make. Um, you know, um, you know, because a lot of people forget that, like, uh, at the end, you know, it, it's funny because... You know, I keep going back to, in time to 2018. And in 2018, you know, when they did, when All In ended and they said that we've all vowed to stay together. And it was actually, I think, Cody who said that. And it was funny because, like, the people in New Japan, who ended up being wrong, but um, but also people who were around all of them, uh, including some of them said that like yeah we th- like in the ring they all said that and it did end up happening you know that Adam Page and Cody and Omega and the Young Bucks all did stick together but um <laughs> you know a lot of you know it it happened that is what happened but at the time they made the statement they were still all going in their own way and uh you know like Cody was very much you know, considering WWE, you know, because again, because of his, his upbringing, you know, and everything like that, even though he came in with, you know, took the, the risk with Tony Khan, you know, I mean, his father told him that like this, this rich, you know what I mean? This stuff never works. And, uh, you know, and so you're going to think that, but he did go with it. And, uh, you know, it was the greatest thing for his career because if, uh, I believe he had gone back to WWE in 2019. Uh, this wouldn't happen, and he wouldn't come back with the chance to be in a top spot. Right now, there's that chance, and we'll see how it all follows up. Um, I thought Seth Rollins was fantastic in this match. Cody was very good in the match, too. He more than held up his own. It wasn't a Seth Rollins one-man show, but Seth Rollins was really fantastic in this match. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio... We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.